This is Stacy Marshall with Printware Magazine. Matt Vassallo with the RhinestoneWorld.com. Richard Greaves with ScreenMaking.com. Brian Walker with RTP Apparel. You are listening to the Two Regular Guys Podcast. 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 It's hosted by Terry Combs. Terry Combs. Terry Combs. And Aaron Montgomery. Aaron Montgomery. Aaron Montgomery. Keep on listening. I don't know if these guys are or that regular. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the show. It is Friday, December 4th, 2020. I'm Terry Combs, and you can find me at terrycombs.com. And I'm Aaron Montgomery, and you can find me over at rsuccessgroup.com. Uh, today, Terry, after our week off last week, we get uh, to be uh, listeners. We get to be regulators today, and uh, we'll be turning the mics over to Christine and Tanya and Kelly and Allie and hopefully Pilar. She's having up oh, there. She just popped in. So and Pilar <laughs> as well. And Christine will be uh, moderating a panel discussion about supporting women in 2021. So I am uh, excited to sit back, be a regulator, learn, understand and, and uh, take this all in, Terry. And you know, Aaron, uh, these are the nominees for the Reggie Awards for uh, women in garment decorating. So that's that's awesome that uh, we were able to get everybody on board, and uh, and uh, they'll maybe they'll be doing their elevator pitch on on why they should be selected. You think? <laughs> That's right. Uh, there was some discussion the other day with uh, Todd Downing, who is uh, checking in here this morning. Good morning, Todd. Uh, that, uh, you know, we'll see how much fighting goes on today, too. But uh, <laughs> very amazing people. And I can't wait to uh, to hear from them and uh, and learn. But uh, yes, you, you also get to uh, before you make your nominations. So speaking of that, Terry. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The uh, voting for the Reggies ends on December 10th at 5 p.m. Central because Central Time is the center of the universe, according to Aaron. And <laughs> so Aaron's going to pop that up on the screen, but it's uh, it's uh, to the number two regular guys dot com slash 2020 underscore Reggies. You can just go to uh, two regular guys dot com. Click on the Reggies, and there'll be an option there to go in and please go in and, and vote. A lot of voting's taking place already, Aaron. And uh, there's, but we've got, uh, you know, basically another week. Uh, it, it ends on the Thursday before our show next week. And we'll be, next week, we'll be announcing uh, the winners of the Reggie Awards. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, ex very exciting. The uh, eighth annual, Terry, eighth annual. That, that, Crazy, that. huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, you know, so I don't know if, you know, the ten, after the 10th annual, it's just mic drop time or, or what? But, uh. <laughs> and, and we used to lie and say that we, uh, we were wearing tuxedos, but then we went, uh, started doing this on Facebook. So, you know. We won't be wearing tuxedos. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to print some of those tuxedo shirts. There you go. That would be uh, that would definitely be appropriate. But well, you know, Aaron, and 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 be, since uh, the the ladies usually run run a little long, we were gonna not do a dad joke, but Christine insisted that we do a dad joke. It was so. I know. I, I thought that, uh, you know, well, she basically said, okay, if I would have kept my mouth shut, it wouldn't have happened. And we're like, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, be, being a, a dad of four and a granddad of five, soon to be six, I, I, I always have one in my back pocket. So do you, do you want to hear my dad joke? Okay, absolutely. Let's do it. All right, Aaron. Do you want a brief explanation of what an acorn is? Yes, I do. All right. In a nutshell, it's an oak tree. <laughs> uh, very awesome. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, we, we talked about the saying it as a mom joke today, but no mom would ever tell that joke. So. Yeah, yeah. Moms <laughs> but, actually have good jokes. So uh, yeah, that's yeah, definitely, that's yeah, definitely some bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Indeed. So um excellent joke. Now, uh just for everybody's uh understanding, so you kind of cut Eric uh could not make it today. So I am actually trying to run the board as well. So you, you will not have the same awesome experience that Eric brings you every Friday. It will be uh, disjointed and uh, probably messed up half the time. So uh, just <laughs> giving everybody fair warning today. Fortunately, the, the, uh, the ladies will uh, take over and make this an amazing show. Uh, let's get a couple of regulators here real quick, Terry. Um, we've got Cindy was the first one jumping in this morning. G good morning, Cindy and uh, Renee and Wade and uh, Gusta from Sweden. Hello. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, Frank Dunn. And, uh, and I think if I remember right, Frank's in the UK. 
Uh, so we've got an international uh, group going here today. So that that's nice. uh, always awesome. So, all right, cool. Terry, well, Aaron, before we dive in, we want to thank everyone for checking out the Two Regular Guys podcast. If you are listening to the podcast version, we would appreciate you sharing with your friends so they can become regulators too. Plus, we would love and appreciate you giving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, or wherever out there you're listening. We are always looking for new guests. If you or anyone you know would like to join us, go to calendly.com slash two. That's the number two, regular guys, and give us your show ideas. If you're watching us live right now, please join in with comments and questions. Reach out to industry friends right now so they can join us too. I tried to find the Calendly thing, but I couldn't find it. So. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll put that in the comments as well. So if, again, we're, we're starting to uh, book up already for early 2021. And uh, so, yeah, we, we want to have an amazing ninth season of the two regular guys. And we need you guys' help, the regulators, to make sure that we're bringing you the content that you want to hear. So looking forward to that. Um, one other quick thing, Terry, before we turn the mics over here. Um, so Impressions Expo is our sponsor, and uh, they are working on a, a new uh, video, but they've got lots of things going on, as you can possibly imagine. Uh, right now, they've announced that the Long Beach show will be happening in April. Uh, but, uh, Terry, there is also a virtual event that will be happening around the same time of the uh, normal Long Beach weekend. So, right. It, I know uh, I was having difficulty last week or the last time we were on the show and you got a chance to talk to uh, Josh and Jamar. W w give us a little bit of a quick rundown on that. If you don't yeah, mind. it's uh, there, it's going to be at a virtual event. So there are going to be some sponsors. So you can you can see, you know, because that's the show that everybody uh, introduces new products, things like that. So, sure. so that's going to be happening uh, on a virtual basis. Uh, there are going to be uh, several seminars that you would normally see at the event, and uh, uh, I, I'm going to be giving a seminar. and And a lot of the a lot of the folks you would normally see at the uh, Impressions Expo are going to be giving events, and, and it's kind of interesting. They're breaking them out in um, the, the the events are going to be 30 to 45 minutes rather than the hour and 20 that you normally do. <clears throat> and they're breaking them into uh, 10, 15 minute segments. So it's going to be uh, little little snippets, little bites of uh, of information, but a lot of good stuff. And and you'll be able to find that at impressionsexpo.com and uh, go out there and and support uh, the the largest show other than Printing United that we have here in the U.S. and and uh, you know hopefully uh, be there for real come uh, come next April. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, we're all getting to that point where uh, <laughs> we need some human interaction, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Gary, we need to time travel, man. Come on. <laughs> I even had my groceries delivered yesterday, so I, yeah. <laughs> I need to go out and start my car, make sure it's still, uh, it's still <laughs> right. Yeah, that's All right. Terry. Well, let's uh, let me get that banner off of there. Let's get to what we all actually came here for today. Uh, let's start by bringing in our guest host, Christine Shreve. And Christine, welcome into the show. Good morning, guys. And I, I am sorry that I opened my mouth, but the acorn <laughs> joke was, you know, I had to have my moment of getting jabbed with a pin. That's all. That's all right. It's it, it, a nutshell. It was a pretty good joke. <laughs> yeah, it was a really good joke. Yeah. As jokes go, as jokes go, I have to say it was less painful than some of the other ones you've done. <laughs> that That's good. That's good. Um, all right, Christine. So before we bring in in your panel here, your guest, can you give us just a, a quick rundown of, of what uh, what we're going to talk about here today? Um, well, basically, since all the women who will be on the show today are uh, nominees for the Women in Garment Decoration Award. I thought it would be a great idea since these are women that the, re the regulators clearly feel are people that are doing something to help support other women in the industry. Yep. I thought we should talk about that. Absolutely. Oh, cool. Todd's comment, that joke was nutty. Oh, that's just. <laughs> uh, thank you, Todd, for, the, uh, for that. That's Todd. That was painful too. Thank yeah, you so great. much for that. Um, so I thought that it would be interesting to just bring all the nominees together and talk about, okay, what can we do in 2021 to, as Aaron would say, raise all the boats, 
And, you know, raising all the boats, hopefully the boats have women in them, but raising all the boats means raising all the boats for everybody. So, you know, everybody that's in the industry, because if women do better, it's logical that men are going to do better too. So, you know, this is, I'm being altruistic here. Yeah, no, I I love it. (laughs) You know, and I think, you know, you make a good point there though. I I honestly think that the boat gets raised just by putting women in it. You know, I I think that there's something to be said with that, that, uh, that diversity of, of thought (laughs) can be huge. Oh yeah. I think that's totally true. And I think that, um, if you don't pay attention to how things are going for women, then you put yourself in a position where the whole industry can decay and you don't really notice it. So you need to be aware of it. But, you know, I just feel strongly that there's so many strong, intelligent, amazing, capable women out there. And I really want to see them be the best that they can possibly be. And I want to see them have as many opportunities as they can have. So it's kind of a two pronged thing. One is encouraging the women and the other one is let's make more opportunities so that women can really show what they can do. So wonderful. Okay. Well, they're not, people didn't show up to see Terry and I anymore. So we're going to get out of the way. (laughs) Oh, but uh, you guys are just so fun. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, we've already got the dad joke out of the way. So this uh, is true. We'll ruin some other program and uh <laughs> all right well i have so, to say your whole this isn't going to go very smoothly thing really made me feel confident so thanks for that sorry i, I will do a better job okay all right well <laughs> we're out of here and uh here they come in just one moment christine okay yay Hi, ladies. <laughs> Lovely to have you. Now we're going to play a little game of Ken Christine Remember Everything. So here we go. The ladies that are with me today, Tanya Deutscher from the Visual Identity Vault, Kelly DeFries from Crystal Ninja, Ali Banholzer, who wear your spirit warehouse, she put it on her name tag, and Pilar Harrison from <laughs> Pill Customs. So thank you, ladies. I'm sure all the regulators already know who you are because you've all been on the show before. I'm so grateful to you all for being here and especially Kelly, who has been spending all her free time trying to put little rhinestones on a car, which is, uh, which to me is just like, would make my mind explode. But anyway, so what we're talking about today is how to support women in 2021 and beyond, but 2021 for the sake of an argument. And one of the first things I want to, talk about is something that's not necessarily on our list. Surprise. (laughs) Well, you, all of you that have done this with me before, you know, I never stick with the questions. So um, it's kind of on the list, but one, the one thing that I was thinking about when I was thinking about what makes a good role model is if there was one behavior or one thing that I could model for other women in the industry, what would it be? And as I was thinking about that, I thought, oh, that's a really good question. I have to remember to ask that. And I will say, I'm actually going to answer this one before I throw it to you guys, because the reason I was thinking about this is I did something, I don't know if if any of you saw it, some of you might, but I've been playing with temporary tattoos and I have on my ankle now the word ask, A-S-K. And the reason I have that is because I'm really bad at doing that. I don't ask for things. I don't pitch my work. I don't do that nearly as much as I should. And I don't ask for help. And I don't, I just, for whatever the reason, the circumstances of my life or whatever, I just, that's not a skill set of mine. So having that word on my ankle, strangely enough, makes me, I see it and it reminds me and then I do it. So that's what I teach people. Ask for what you're worth. Ask for the price for your work that you know you should charge. Ask to speak. Ask to be on a podcast. You know, all that stuff. Do the thing that scares you because, and I mean, as basic as it is, ask because if you don't ask, you're not going to get it because nobody's going to knock on your door and go, Hey, I have the perfect job and I've been waiting for you. Will you come and do this job? 
I mean, it'd be awesome if they would, but you know, it's the same thing my friends tell me about the meeting the perfect man. He's not going to knock on my door. And I'm like, well, he could. The UPS guy could be perfect for me. You never know. <laughs> but anyway, so that's my thing. So now that I've rambled on, Tanya, since you're right next to me, I'm going to start with you on this one. What do you think? Um, I want to be more of a coach and tell people not do things for them. That's that's kind of like my kryptonite. I would, if someone would ask me for something or if I saw someone in need of something, I would just want to jump in and do it. Mm -hmm. Now, when I'm talking to people and mentoring people, it's really overwhelming if I were to do that for everyone and they wouldn't learn anything. So I'm more apt to be like, okay, well, have you checked this? You know, what have you thought about this? Try, try to give them some guidance, especially if it's mm -hmm. something you know, because, you know, in all the forums, there's always a couple of people that come in and ask just the basics. They've done no research or, or whatever. Those are the people that need to go do some research before <laughs> they need to be mentored. And I'm That's not trying a pet to peeve of mine. So I'm with you on that one. It's it's a huge pet peeve of, of mine as well. And but if someone's already done the research and they're like, I'm just not getting this part, you know, can you mm -hmm. help me or whatever? And if I know somewhere where they're going to be able to easily get the information, I'll refer them there or we'll have a conversation about it to try to empower themselves mm -hmm. instead of depending on, on others. I'm definitely there for, for people and I, and I want to support people, but I also can't take all that on because it is overwhelming. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Okay. We'll just go around the circle. Kelly, what do you think? Um, a little bit of the same thing I, um, in the groups that we go into to help answer questions and help others um, with their projects or with their, um, you know, their bids. Um, it's a constant, you know, tons of basic questions that you just one little ask Google and it will fill the answer out like right, <laughs> right there. Um, but yet it's no one ever respects our time and expects mm -hmm. us to be there to answer all of their questions when, when meanwhile we're trying to run a business you guys have families like i mean there's just so much going on that it's like yeah let me stop everything that i'm doing to tell you what kind of glue for shoes when you never told me what kind of shoes you're wearing how are you wearing them who are they for just what mm -hmm. glue for shoes that's my biggest biggest question i always get i probably have eight already in my dms what glue for shoes so and there's also the, um, you know, start out your questions or when you're looking for help. Hi, my name is, and I've seen your work and make, would you please help? Like a full sentence. <laughs> we lost. <laughs> yes. And, and it's, it's coming from someone that is not a writer and is not, you know, well-spoken. I'm like, can you please just tell me good morning? Like even abbreviate it. G apostrophe morning. Give me one of those. Good morning. <laughs> what glue for shoes then i'll be like oh hey let me help you out but um you know it's it's quite a journey to learn how to answer those questions and not offend them with your answers <laughs> you have to totally change all of that but um i'm really open to helping like that's why we've started this whole project i answer glue questions non-stop for hours if there are any sometimes there's just not any questions um, and that's kind of my open thing. If you've got questions, I'm here to answer them, but you kind of have to help me out with your questions. So, so just um, be respectful and be complete, basically. Correct. Yes. When you're, when you're getting right. into it, looking for the information, don't just like demand the answers from the mentor. If people keep calling it, me a mentor for some reason, I'm like, just let's, let's be friends first, you know, let's, you know, share a cup of coffee together or caffeine water, something. So. Caffeine water. Yes. Which, okay. you know, it's always near. Caffeine water. All right. Allie, yeah. what do you think about this? <laughs> what was the question? I'm what not was kidding. the question? Oh, geez. Now I have to try to remember. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, so kind of piggybacking off Tanya and Kelly. And good morning, Kelly. Can you tell me good the best way you glue to use on the tips of a converse? <laughs> All of them. All of them. Yep. Um, so I, as you all were talking, three things came to mind for me. Education, confidence, and perspective. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, I am a perpetual learner. I'm always educating. So as new people come on and mentoring and answering questions, I often feel I can learn just as much from you as you can learn from me. 
which leads to confidence. Have confidence in yourself because uh, you are an expert in something that I am not. And so, again, there's that relationship building. And I may be further along in my business and be able to help and, and things that way. But, um, you know, there's a lot of other areas. So, as Kelly said, getting to know each other, becoming friends, mm-hmm. ask, as you said, asking um, things that way. And then perspective. Um, I'm sure Tanya can speak to this as well with my with my story. Um, the longer you're in business and the longer you just simply live, I think your perspective can change. And particularly if you've had a significant event, um, I lost my spouse. Uh, Tanya can share her story. It's not mine to share, but um, uh, it's given me a perspective in business and in helping others. I receive so much care and support when I lost my husband and in his illness, that uh, it's just what I want to be able to return. Good. Those are all, all three of those are good. And hi, Pilar. We're glad you made it. Hey, I'm sorry. The computer decided to reboot. I'm like, what? No, now, why? Really? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, that's it's, what happened. I think they know. I think the machines know. Well, it's Friday. So, you know, it it's, is Friday. it's okay. It's Friday. Um, for me, I'm thinking that. Uh, like I'm still in a lot of my old craft groups when I very first started getting into business. And it seems like it's very cyclical where every year and even sometimes several times a year, you get a whole influx of people who just got a craft machine or just Mm -hmm. saw their friend doing something. They want to jump in the business too. And, you know, like Kelly was saying, you know, you type in Google, it'll give you the answer, but it seems like it's easier for people just to come in the groups and just say, how do I do this? Even though it's been asked eight times right before them, they wanted to ask. And so I always try to remind myself, we all began somewhere. And so trying to put myself back in that same spot, I've been very blessed because I've gotten to meet some fabulous people in the industry, including Kelly, and gotten to be very good friends with them. And a lot of people have, I feel like, taken me under their wing as I was beginning mm-hmm. and starting out. And even still to this day, I, I still learn things every day from Kelly or Renee or Todd and Corey and Matt and all these people who I see as icons have constantly willingly given of themselves and of their time and their their experience which I think only just benefits not just me but everybody else and so as Aaron says it raises the whole boat for everybody Mm -hmm. when we all just jump in and are willing to try and help each other and uh like how Kelly was saying sometimes you have to not um offend people with your answer (laughs) there's there's a way to say things tactfully Mm -hmm. because I, I mean I get questions in my inbox daily from some people. And sometimes it's great. It's just a quick two minute answer. Sometimes it's several hours where I'm like, okay, well, it's fine. I'll help you. I'm still working. So I might not get back to you in the next mm-hmm. two seconds or I've got you know, a family. My daughter just broke her foot. So I am, you know, her slave this week, which is really awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it could have been worse. She's a kid and you know, it's fine. We're going to the doctor right after this. So I think though, just, having some empathy for others and realizing that we all um, sometimes are insecure and even asking and sometimes realizing just even asking can take a lot of uh, nerve for someone. There's too many people that are just like lurkers in the boards, don't want to say anything. They don't want to look stupid. And it's like, go ahead and just put it out there because whatever you ask and I can answer or someone else can answer, I'm sure there's going to be a dozen or more people that can learn from that one um, right. taking the step forward to ask. Right. It goes back to your thing to ask. Thing to ask. There you go. So we've made a full <laughs> circle now. Well, Ta-da. I want to I talk about something that we've discussed. I don't know if we've all discussed it together, but I know we've discussed it in various iterations before. And that's mentoring people. Because one of the things that came out of the first, the answers to the first question was that we all want to help, but holy crap, we got no time. And it's, you know, and so I wonder sometimes if the idea of being like a full on mentor is really the way to go, or if you can be such a thing as like a mini mentor, where maybe you answer a question or you work in a group or something and you're not investing like huge amounts of time, but you're investing a small amount of time. And I also think the other thing that needs to be addressed, too, is when you're mentoring or helping somebody, what Kelly said, which is take the time to be respectful about it. Be respectful of other people's time. You know, 
all of us that are getting asked these questions, we worked really hard to get to a position where people knew us so they could ask us questions. But that's, I guess what I'm asking is, what is your tolerance for mentoring, ladies? And how would you most prefer to go about it? And hi, Jay. Hi, Jay. <laughs> Good to see you, Jay. Oh, we lost oh, we'll our we'll uh -oh. uh -oh. So we'll keep going and hopefully she'll pop back in. But I'm going to hit you with this one first, Kelly, because I know that mentoring is something that you're kind of on the fence about because of the time commitment. Correct. Um, and the just the word mentoring, it I think it's a new word that people have taken and they have lost the word or the meaning of the word apprenticeship because people come at me wanting to know everything there is to know to do what I do and be my mentor. And I'm like, no, that's called an apprenticeship. That means you come here every day for free for 10 hours a day for five years. Mm -hmm. Now I'm your mentor. You can call me your mentor, but you're an apprentice, and that's what that is to me. But when mm -hmm. I have 50 people a day coming at you, like what the, what the wonderful internet has created for us is a constant chatter, a constant notifications. It never, ever stops. It never, ever stops. So people that want your information, which is wonderful because we have so much information to give because we did the research, we did mm -hmm. the testing, we did the failing, exactly. the tens tens of thousands of dollars in failing to learn what glue for shoes. And I'm here to tell you, it's all of them. But <laughs> um, but yeah, it just gets to where you have to be, you have to figure out your boundaries and what, you know, your jobs are more important than mentoring someone because you have to still pay for your bills. You have to run your company. You have, you know, promises that you gave out. You have to do those commitments. So that's when a couple of years ago I created something on my site um, that is, uh, I think I used to have it as low as $50, you know, what glue should I use? And there's a photo with lots of glues. And then there's one that's 250. I'll help you with your project. And there's one that's like 1200 that I will plan your project, do all your stuff. I think that even got double because people were actually clicking on it. And I was like, okay, this is still not worth my time. So it's, it's that much <laughs> stuff that you have to actually put a price on your time. And if they respect your availability to mentor them, then they're going to lay it on that credit card because that's what this is all about. Like it's really, yeah. you know, we're all artists that are like, since we were little, Oh, if I could just get that one gig and get paid for that one canvas. Well, to me, everything we do is a canvas. And we got to get paid. Mm -hmm. If it's a hobby, then we're going to be sitting in our little dining rooms, like where my office is and just making stuff for ourselves. And then that's wonderful. But when it becomes a business, we have commitments that we've already put out that we have mm -hmm. to take care of. We have to respect those that help us do our jobs. We have to hire those that help us do our jobs and respect their time too. So it's, it's just, I like to, I, you can call me your mentorship all you want, but until you click that buy it now button, I'm busy doing what I got to do to keep this company running or else it's Willy Wonka day and I'm out. Like I can't wait for Willy Wonka day. So that's what I've even told the lady I hired to run my company. That one day I'm going to pass out 20 tickets and you will not see me again. So, you know, it's coming. <laughs> well, I like what you said. I, I like what you said about valuing your time, because I think right. especially as women, we tend to have the caretaking mentality. Like Tanya said earlier, I want to do it for you. I want right. to make it better. Yep. And the problem and I want to with bring that, you water and snacks while you do it. Yeah. I'm all about and then I'll pat you on the head and say, oh, you did so good, honey, when you're done. Right. Right. But the whole <laughs> problem is that that's a huge amount. That's a huge investment of our time and our energy right. and our emotion. And oh, right. that's that's a really good point. Yeah. All right, Allie going to hit you with this one. Yeah. So uh, a little bit on the same page with Kelly, I am always happy to be a uh, active participant in groups and answer questions. If I can, if I'm on and I can answer them quickly, I'll answer the question um, and things that way. Uh, people that I've developed relationships with that DM me, I'll take the time to do that. Um, but I actually run a business sprint that I have that um, twice a week we meet for an hour and it is specifically to work on our businesses um, and there's there's a group of us uh, and I get as much help from other individuals in the group as as I give. Um, but that is a monetized 
a monetized group that right. you can come and you get my dedicated time um, for that hour, sometimes an hour and a half if we run over and we're brainstorming and different things that way. And, and uh, it's marketing and it's business and it's how to's and it's, you know, all of these, these different things. And, uh, you know, if you want the most and best of me, come join the sprint. I'd love to have you. But right. uh, otherwise I try to be, I try to give back to the communities that I'm involved in and the communities that I'm taking from as well. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm running a business with 14 employees and I have business goals of my own. Um, and so I will, I will help the best that I can, but there are limits also. Right. Well, and Tanya, before I throw this to you, I want to throw another thought out here that I, I'm just wondering about since we've been talking about this. Do you think that people value, ooh, I like this. It's a great group, Allie. Love it and appreciate it from Keith Burwell. So that's that's very nice. Always nice to hear that people appreciate what you do. Yeah, um, Keith is in the sprint, so <laughs> we, we meet twice a week. <laughs> awesome. So circling back to what I was going to, the addition I was going to put on this, do you think that people value the information that they get more if they're paying for it? And Tanya, since I'm talking to you, I'll throw this. Since yeah. you were next in line, oh, yay, Pilar's back. Oh, hi, Pilar. Um, hi. Hi. I had to get on my phone. My computer just blipped off. And I'm like, oh, I guess oh, I'm going no. shopping for a computer today. After the <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, no. so, so I am you, really sorry. I apologize. You're fine, Pilar. Tanya, do you think that uh, people value info more if they're paying for it? Or not necessarily, but I think that they take it more to heart if they have skin in the game. Okay. Um, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. And it depends on the individual too. Like when I was starting to be involved in groups, I was always so worried about if I were to send a message to someone that I was bothering them or anything. But then again, it came down to asking, um, like for instance, a year ago, Black Friday, I messaged Todd and asked him if I could put a live on his page. It was the first live I did. So it was a big step out of my comfort zone. And I was afraid he was going to say no. But that was like the beginning of my journey of, of going live. Um, but I'm always afraid of bothering anyone. And some people don't have that filter. <laughs> 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 and it's just whatever pops into their head they're asking instead of doing the research. Um, but I think, you know, if they have skin in the game, like the, the business sprint, um, the Shirt Lab Tribe. Um, Aaron's group, um, Aaron and Todd's group, that type of thing. I think that it's just more organized. It makes more sense and people pay more attention to it. Okay. You know, obviously if, um, if you're just a really, really cognizant about it and you appreciate someone's time, but not everyone is like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think that this industry is very caring and giving, but I think on online, we tend to lose sight of they're actually people they, that have lives. I don't think people often think that far ahead. You don't live in the computer? <laughs> <laughs> oh. so, and, and I happened upon being a mentor, mini mentor, whatever, by accident through, through what's happened to me this year. Um, you know, Jay had his heart attack January 4th and I was scared to death. And the only place that I could really go that Jay couldn't see was women in garment decorating. Mm -hmm. And the group was so wonderful that I could just go and be like, I'm terrified today. This is what's going on and get really great feedback. And then from there, it snowballed into my idea of inspire, collaborate and encourage. And that's been my mantra this year. So I, I look at it more as collaboration. I've made some really great friendships of different levels. You know, there's some people that I talk to and collaborate with daily. Um, my my relationship with Becky Kotzer is multiple times a day. And I'm just so proud of her because I've been able to see her grow. And actually yesterday I told her, I said, you know, people are really kind of getting tired of my really, really positive attitude. <laughs> if I get like that, please tell me. And she's like, no, it's actually been good to me, good for me. Um, where some of my employees are like, if I hear you say one more time, just take the next step. It'll be okay. I'm going to strangle you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Pilar, I don't know how much of this you got because you kind of blipped out, but we were talking about being a mentor, being a mini mentor. And the gist of the conversation is 
kind of been that, you know, we all like to help, but sometimes we have to place a value on offering our help because we're all busy people. And then Renee put a comment in here and said, Pilar is a mini mentor. <laughs> I love you, but I know, I know that you work a lot with the rhinestone world. And um, so what, what are your thoughts on mentoring or mini mentoring people? Well, I, for me, it goes back to my answer from the other question is uh, I try to go ahead and put myself in the person's shoes. I, when people do actually have the courage to come to me and ask me for questions or ask me for help, um, sometimes, like Tanya says, you know, people don't have the filter of like, oh, am I bothering you? Oh, you have a life. You're doing something. <laughs> but you know, I always look at it as when I first found the rhinestone world, when I, after I found them and I started listening to Matt and I started talking to Todd and or just reading the board, my business took off. I started getting orders. I started learning how to do more things. Every time I felt out of my comfort zone, I grew more. And so I go back to that all the time because I always have people like telling me, wow, you're so helpful. Wow, thank you so much. And I appreciate that. That's great. Thank you for the thanks. But I put it back to, I've learned so much from so many other people in the industry that I okay. try to pay it forward, you know? And so in a way, I kind of feel like a mini mentor as a, um, an admin on the TRW page because I do get to answer a lot of questions and I try to make myself available to help out whenever I can. And so, especially, like I said, this time of year, a lot of people are getting their very first embroidery machine or the very first cameo or cricket and they have mm -hmm. no idea what they're doing, but they wanted to jump in both feet and start a business, which, you know, great. Keep up that enthusiasm. That's awesome. You need that. And so I try to guide them and point them in the right direction instead of like, doing everything for them and give them every single answer. I answer the basic questions and I try to guide them as to where they need to go to find more information for themselves. Well, and I think that's a really good point because in my experience, the people that will take the guidance and go do the work are the people that are going to be successful. The ones who come back to you for every little thing and go, well, what do I do now? Well, what do I do now? I mean, I've seen people on back when forums used to be big, there were people who would actually post, I want to start a t-shirt business. Tell me everything I need to do. And I was like, dude, if you can't even like figure out the basics, then you should not start a business because it's not going to work. And I also want to talk about this comment. Um, Aaron, can we see dot tone Dan Campbell's comment? Um, valuing information and paying for it. Yes, people always seem to value something more when they pay for it. My art teacher once told me, if you're afraid to charge for your art and you practically give it away, the people getting the art will put the same value on it. And I think there's some truth in that, that if you're, you know, we have to know the value of what we're offering. So we have to try to find a balance between being helpful and giving away the farm, basically. And I think that's an interesting balance to find sometimes, especially when you're on a mission to, you know, lift all the boats. I like that phrase too. So. <laughs> and I don't know what, what is Todd saying here? I was at a bar at a trade show and got called out for being too positive. I'll never forget the look on Pilar's face. <laughs> yeah, that was shocking. Well, that, that was well, kind of a bad. jarring moment hearing that. That is sad. But I guess let's talk about being positive for a minute, because I think that's one of the things in the course of my year of talking about women or my two years or however long it's been now. One of the things I've noticed is that a lot of people take the conversations that I have as though I'm saying something negative like men are bad or men are holding us down or, you know, evil men, it's all the men. And I'm like, that's, you know, so I find myself saying a lot of the time, no, I really, I like men. I think men are good. And I want to talk about that because I think it's an interesting phenomenon. Why, if I'm saying, and it doesn't have to be women. It could be African Americans, or it could be Latina, pe Latina people, Latino people, or it could be, you know, anybody who, or people with, you know, who have a disability of some kind or whatever it is. But it seems like when you start having the conversation, 
uh, you know, at least when I start having the conversation about women, sometimes I'm nominated as the president of the, you know, man haters club. And I'm like, why do I even I don't get that? So I wanted to talk about why it has to be either or. And I, I know that's kind of a tough question, but I think it's an interesting one. Um, why if Can we're trying to, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I think I have an answer or my, an opinion Tell on me. it. Tell me okay. what the answer is. Um, all right, so I think that maybe it's just because it seems that to be so divisive instead of it being a marriage of the two sides where it, that's not the intent. It's more of, okay, let's go ahead and try and focus on this group. This group is one that maybe needs to have more attention or maybe mm -hmm. needs to have a little bit of a boost. But like personally for me and my business, I have been, I've had some great collaborations. Like Todd and I have collaborated on designs and I, I personally in my business am going to try and support whoever has both the best value and also given me the best support. So my loyalty does lie with companies who have gone out of their way to help not just mm -hmm. me, but others as well. And so that's why, you know, if I need any kind of Swarovski, I go straight to Kelly. If I need mm -hmm. anything laser, I go straight to Renee. And if I need you know, vinyl or just rhinestones, I go to Matt. And so mm -hmm. I do have my loyalty there. So I personally, for me, I try to marry the two, like male owned businesses and female owned businesses to make it more of a collaboration. And instead of having it be, like you said, like the perception is so divisive. I don't want mm -hmm. that division. So I try to more blend both sides. Right. Yeah, to, to piggyback on what Pilar is saying, I think just the psychology and, and human nature is to be competitive. Um, and so you're looking for that angle. You're looking for the differences instead of looking for the common ground and looking um, where we can help each other and things that way. And I think that's kind of natural human instinct. And I think that's something um, as some of our groups, the Women in Garment Decorating Group and, and things that way, has really overcome. It's a community or, mm -hmm. you know, a, a village. And um, we're in it to help each other and and grow. And I, similar to Pilar, I could care less what gender you are, what ethnicity you are, what size business you are. If we can collaborate and help each other and it's good for both of us, let's do it. Awesome. I think that's good. Kelly, any thoughts on this one? Um, a little bit of all of that. Um, in the jobs that I've held before, it's usually all man dominated, male dominated, um, and you learn to work with or you learn to work without. And it was always easier to work with. So I've just figured out how to, of course, you know, not always ask them to pick up that power tool, but pick it up myself and handle some things myself, but I do know my limits. I do know that I cannot lift such and such, and I do need a man's help sometimes. Like I do, I know my limits, and I'm totally fine with saying, you know what? Well, to my husband, um, I would love to ask you, and, and here's my ask. I always plan out my ask, because if I can handle such and such task on my own with maybe a little bit extra practice, a little bit extra research, then I can handle it. Um, but it just, it was never a problem to work with any of uh, men or, or anyone else. So it's like if everyone pulls their own weight and it helps each other, then it kind of goes from there. Um, but now that I'm kind of alone and it's it, not alone, but um, with our such a small company, we're only three people, three and a half, because one's about to have a baby. Um, but uh, <laughs> so it's, it's a very small operation. And if we don't, you know, plan our projects like we used to go on the road for tons of gigs if we didn't bring all of our equipment if we didn't bring backup batteries or stupid headlamps because there might not be light in the facility or batteries or anything on that job site now you're stuck with 20 hard hat foremans looking at you because you didn't bring your headlight like so mm -hmm. it was it was like i think that prepared me working with in construction years ago i was a welder in a shipyard like that made me know to bring your own stuff. If you can't work with the men, then don't work with the men. So it, I have that whole mentality of like, let me just prep my stuff and oh yeah, let me prep yours too and help you out. And so, because this is gonna happen or this is gonna happen or it's gonna be 98 degrees in the convention center and we're gonna be, we're gonna all hot flash, right? We're all at that time where it's like, <laughs> you're gonna get extra irritated and extra and how do you control 
yourself to keep working with everyone else and make everything go a little smoother and uh and then no complaining so um yeah it's a it's a learning journey for me every day no matter what what i'm doing <laughs> i like corey's comment here aaron can we show uh men have strong points and women have their yep. strong points it just works when you are able to work Perfect. together yeah and that I, is so that's true exactly yep. true tanya right. you have anything you want to throw in there or did we no i do um I think a lot of it comes down to attitude. Doesn't necessarily matter if you're a man or a woman or black or white or Asian or whatever. Um, you can be awful in any of those. You could be great <laughs> in any of those. Yeah, um, true. One thing I've learned this year is that the attitude is everything, and I and I didn't recognize it in myself at first, but I've been offered opportunities because of having a positive attitude working with all kinds of people. I was just on a call for BNI where I'm a new support director. Black, white, Asian, men, women, everything. And I tend to not look at, at those factors, but so many people in our world right now do and just want to put hateful things up just to stir the yeah. pot. Right. Yeah. And so Which, that's... So I very quickly eliminate those from my life just because I've, you know, life is too short. Yep. Um, when it comes back to the perspective that Allie was talking about earlier. You've had some things happen in your life and you very quickly prioritize where you want to put your focus. And for me, you know, it's collaborating with others and being with like minded individuals that are going to raise me up as much as I'm going to hopefully help raise them up. Right. Definitely. Well, you know, there's that quote and I don't, while well, there's a couple of sayings, there's the never be the smartest person in the room saying, which I think is very true. That is true. And yeah. there's also the, um, you know, surround yourself with people who are, who are doing and thinking and being what you want to do and think and be because mm -hmm. they're going to raise your game. So, right. you know, sur surround yourself with people who are striving. So thank you for being here, ladies, because you're definitely <laughs> raising my game and I appreciate it. Can, Christine, can I add one more? Yes, ma'am. Along with your don't be the smartest, don't be the smartest person in the room. Uh, God gave you two ears and one mouth. Use them in proportion. Yes, that's a good one, too. That's a good we one, too. We say that a lot here. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, oh, Dan has another good comment here, Aaron, if we could put that up, long one, but good. I find it surprising that this idea that someone chooses to work with or not work with based on a gender or color, that baffles me, I'm assuming. It's not in my thought process. My thought for choosing to work with you is what I can get from you. Are you able to achieve what I need? But I also still had a hard time coming to grips with the idea that there is indeed still some forms of race, racism and discrimination. I'm a little blind to that maybe, and maybe a lot of men are. Hmm. That's an interesting, that's an interesting idea that I wonder that sometimes if maybe if you're someone who's in a so-called minority group for whatever the reason, if you're a little more aware of that stuff, I don't know. That's a question. We have to do one of these sometime with guys on it. And ask them these questions. <laughs> but okay, there's a couple. Um, Todd had a good point here. I'm a middle-aged white guy. To a lot, I'm the devil. Crazy for that. And I don't really. I mean, I'm such a big I, teddy bear. He is well, the most yeah, he giving is. and generous and person. Been, I mean, Todd has been nothing but supportive. So I think some of it is not making judgments on either side until you actually get to know the people and see who they really are. And then once you do, a lot of times you'll learn that maybe what you thought is not necessarily true. That's so. exactly right. Um, during this whole COVID thing, we started doing many virtual get togethers. And one of those were chapter visits from our BNI groups. And I had had a preconceived mo notion of a couple of the members who once we were in a social forum and could get to know each other, my opinion totally changed. And I'm like, they were just nervous or, you know, distracted or whatever. So one of my things I always say to people is don't judge someone just because of how they look or if they have, you know, some people, they don't smile or whatever. 
um, give them a chance because you never know if they're dealing with an illness that people can't see so that they don't think it's there. Um, what's going on in their personal life. Really try to get to know someone and, and not judge them on first appearances. Well, I think that's exactly true. I, I, I would also, agree with that. Go uh, ahead. I was just remembering uh, Jenna Sackett had, had, Sackett had something on her page about how being a woman in the world, not just in this industry, a lot of times we, from when we're little kids, and it's our society perhaps, I don't know about the rest of the world, are taught to maybe lower ourselves or maybe not lower ourselves, um, quiet ourselves so that we mm -hmm. don't overshadow the men. And I think that, you know, in the last 30, 40 years, things have taken a big shift where women do have our own voice. And some guy came on there and he had posted, I've never seen that. And I said, well, that, that may be true. You may never have. But if you are not a woman, you don't know. And so I just think the same kind of mentality, we should probably be aware of people who are different than us that we don't know of what they're going through. You know, for example, like with this whole year with the BLM movement, you know, I'm a, well, I'm a mixed race white woman, but I don't understand um, what an African-American has to deal with in a day to day, in their day to day life. And so I think also with men, they don't know what women have to deal with in business, in life, in everything. So instead of uh, necessarily seeing each other as like the competition or as somebody different, let's just go ahead and celebrate what makes each of us unique, whether you are black, white, male, female, just accept that we're all different and just celebrate the different uniqueness, unique properties that we all have. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. Thing. Didn't Aaron say hire whatever um, your weakness is? Somebody had posted that yeah, recently. That, I thought that was brilliant. Uh, I think Aaron might have said that. Um, but I think it's a hire for to your weaknesses so that you get a fully yes. balanced. But I want to, um, there's a couple of really good comments here. Um, Aaron, starting with the Terry Phil, Fulmore comment. Um, you're right, Tanya. I thought we should put that one out there. And then Dale's comment about not all disabilities show on the outside. I think that's a really good. Um, Corey has an interesting comment here. I feel that if a group of men had a group that was supporting men, they may easily be called sexist. I don't feel like that's the same when women support women. I say support good and talented people. And I don't disagree with that. Um, I guess the question becomes, and this is a, a way um, broader topic than we can get into in the time we have left here, but if you are a group that's been at a disadvantage for whatever the reason, and if you watched my Women in Business podcast a couple weeks ago where I did, where I talked about blooming where you planted, and the fact that women have historically not had a lot of rights for us, it's pretty been a, it's it's pretty been it's been a small amount of time. Um, Aaron, I think that comment can go down. Thank you. Um, it's been a small amount of time, so we're still playing catch up a little bit in some areas. Now, I mean, you can. There's lots of arguments about you know if you're white, you have privilege, and all, and I don't even want to get into all that, but. It's an interesting, what Corey says is interesting. If we, if there was a MIGD group, men in garment decoration, and they didn't let in women, would we be having an award? <laughs> would we be saying yay? I mean, I personally wouldn't have a problem with it. But I don't know. I think that's interesting. And oh, what's, oh... Okay, uh, can we see the question from Marnie or the comment from Marnie, please? I worked on a gender equity project in my former life and have dealt with many of these issues more in the academic world, but I'm going to circle around to this. There is still a glass ceiling in many industries. There is still a salary discrepancy. There is still a good old boys network. I do think Aaron and Todd are starting to knock this down. I don't disagree with that at all. I think Aaron and Todd have been, I mean, we're here on Aaron and Terry's show. So I think right there that says something. But I, I agree with what Marnie had to say here. There, there is still salary discrepancies. There are still glass ceilings. I mean, country's been around for 244 years. We just elected our first female vice president. So 
<sighs> and is there a question in there you're asking Christine as you're all smiling at me like, okay, she got wound up. Now we just have to sit here and smile. But okay, <laughs> let's take this one and, and see where we go with this. So this is, this is my perpetual question that I keep asking, which is how do we make women more visible? Is it doing what we're doing here? Is it encouraging other women to do things? Is it talking about this until everybody's so, ty so tired of us? And the reason I'm asking is you look at speaker panels for certain things and there'll be you know, 15 men and one woman. And yes, I know some of that is systemic, but what can we do as the nominees for the 2020 Reggie Award for women in garment decoration, what can we do? And I don't know who, Ellie, I haven't put you on the spot first yet. So let me start with you and everybody else goes. <laughs> yep. I say, I say, keep doing this. Uh, you know, the, the four of us here, like you said, are all nominees for the, the Reggie Award. So we're doing something to be noticed, good or bad. Right. We're doing something to be noticed. So keep going. Don't stop, even when it's exhausting. Um, I think we're all doing it in a positive way. I think um, that's part of what gets us noticed is that we are out there supporting and being positive and encouraging and mentoring or mini mentoring. Um, and I think it, it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen with a snap of the fingers. So I think we encourage more women to come along with us. And I think we keep doing what we're doing and we just keep taking it an inch at a time. All right, fair enough. Pilar, what do you think? I completely agree with what Ellie just said. I do think that um, having open discussions like this and also recognizing like how uh, Corey was saying that if there was a men's only group, would some of us be like, well, I wanna be in there. Why can't I be in there? But I think that- uh, What are they doing? The yeah, well, I, maybe we don't want to know. That's fine. I'm married. I, I know what men talk about, what they do. I'm good. But uh, I do think that just uh, also trying to keep helping out people who are just breaking out into the industry and guiding them. Because like I honestly had no idea how big this industry was. And I only started three years ago. And so when I was able to have my eyes open and see how big it is and how many people you can learn from and how many different things you can get into. It was just mind boggling and exciting. And so I think just keep letting people know these are things that are open to you. This is these are resources. And, you know, Todd and Aaron have such a fantastic group. Our support group is very supportive. It's very encouraging to everybody. And like, it's like having your own two personal cheerleaders. So I think that just keeping helping others and being, uh, Renee has a good point saying, um, Always try to be kinder than necessary. Yeah, so, I like that comment too. I and I think love she's right. That. And so I, I honestly do think that through uh, kindness and being um, thoughtful of others, it's going to make a lot of difference in the world. I'll agree with that. Okay, Tanya, what do you think? Um, I definitely think that doing what we're doing here and also in the Women in Garment Decoration Group, supporting one another nothing makes me happier than if I'm talking to someone in there and they've had a small win, a big win, whatever. If I've had something to do with that. Awesome. That's amazing. Um, but then also taking it out into our other groups. I had a fantastic conversation spur of the moment with Joseph Kovar the other night. And, you know, we talked on the phone for over an hour and it was about, you know, our thoughts, feelings, philosophies, things like that. And I, I was exhausted when the phone call started and by the end of it, I just felt so good. And I think that if we can apply that to all of our relationships across all groups, um, it makes us look better as females and be better role models for others that think, oh, well, maybe I can do that. You know, if you would have asked me a year ago in December, if I would be doing podcasts, have my own podcast, um, be reaching out to other people, I would have told you that you were crazy. But between having a different attitude, putting myself out there and taking some risks, you can do whatever you put your mind to. You're, you're limiting yourself with your fear. I agree with that. Definitely. Definitely. Okay, Kelly. 
Oh God! What do you? <laughs> did anybody leave anything for you? <laughs> no. I'm gonna hop off on what Tanya said and don't be scared. <laughs> so, well, and no. I think that's very true. And I would yeah. agree with what Marnie said here that Joseph Tobar is is one of the best, definitely. And yeah. I think you know that's that's one of the things that we are very lucky and is that we're doing stuff like this and we have the women in garment decoration group and there are a lot of women that are supporting each other but there are also a lot of amazing men joseph right. and, Todd right. and, and uh, matt vasallo and aaron and terry and eric and you know i could name names all day right. but then yeah. we'd, be, it, we'd be on bonus time for like serious <laughs> so, well, and if i can if I can throw out also in June in Chicago is the Shirt Lab Women's Nexus. Mm -hmm. That's coming. It was supposed to be last June, obviously got postponed, but um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Marshall and Tom are, right. are in that, in that group. But if people are interested, um, you know, check that out. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And I think, I mean, I hope I see more stuff like the Women's Nexus start happening either as part of an established show or, you know, eventually, I mean, heck, you talk to Carolyn Cagle on a good day and she's like, WIGD is going to have a trade show and a booth and, a, uh, <laughs> you know, we're going to have, I'm going to write a book and we're going to have, I don't know what we're going to have. So all <laughs> sorts of stuff. But, and um, I did like Dale's comment here. You never make progress until you step out of your comfort zone. I think that's very true. It's very, very true. Um, but I know that uh, the guys were saying we're already a little bit in bonus time. And if I ask another question, we're going to be a lot in bonus time. So I'm, I'm not going to do it. Aaron, save me. <laughs> all right. I'm saving you. Uh, I mean, I, I, we could do this all day. Um, I could do this all day. That's the problem. Yeah, exactly. exactly. All right, just amazing stuff. Uh, thank you all. Before we get out of here, um, Real quick, I want, to, want you guys to, this is your chance to pitch for the Reggies and also for your company. <laughs> um, I'll just start from what I'm looking at the bottom right here. Uh, Kelly, you want to let people know where they can find you and reach out and all that kind of fun stuff? Oh, sure. Um, I am accessible on every kind of platform you can imagine and some I don't even know about. Um, and I, <laughs> I do love to answer all kinds of questions, but give me a good morning first and that might help. <laughs> all right. um, and um, so I'm, I'm live nearly every other day working on this car, adding uh, the Swarovski crystals and our Kira Kira rhinestones. Um, and it just shows that, you know, putting different em embellishments together can work together and collaborate and not and oh. have just as a beautiful <laughs> result. Um, but yeah, so live training, uh, probably going to be maintaining at least three times a week uh, starting next week. And we'll have giveaways and then everything is available through crystalninja.com and we'll be live on YouTube and the Crystal Ninja Facebook page and also on Twitch. Excellent. Very nice tie in, Kelly. I like that. Yeah, Thank I love you. It. I love Collaboration. It. Yes. <laughs> okay, Allie. Um, so you can find me on Facebook and many of the groups. Uh, feel free to reach out to me in the message if you're interested in the Sprint um, and that collaboration. And uh, you can also contact us through, contact me through our website. It's just wearyourspiritwarehouse.com. Uh, easy peasy. And uh, I am speak. I am one of the speakers at the Women's Nexus in Chicago as well. So. Cool. Come on out. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Pilar, how about you? Uh, you can reach me on Facebook under Pilar Harrison, either my personal or my business. They're both Pilar Harrison. Um, I'm on Instagram as pillcustoms.com, and you can reach me email uh, sales at pillcustoms.com. And happy to help answer questions. Usually um, the questions I get are on rhinestones and on Corel Draw, but <laughs> if I can help with any other questions, I'm happy to try to give whatever knowledge I have. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Tanya, what, what are right. you going on? Um, Facebook is the visual identity vault and also inspire, collaborate, and encourage. Um, we do a weekly podcast every Thursday and it's not just industry related. It's whatever is inspiring, which that's what's helped get Jay and I through our year. And I'm available for any questions as well. Awesome. Wow, you guys are all very helpful. Uh, Christine, what, what's what's the latest from you? Where, where can people find you at? 
Um, primarily on Facebook and the Women Development Recreation Group. Um, that's where I show up most often. Um, ChristineShreve.com is my website. And I just finally got all the um, Women in Business podcast um, podcasts that we've done up on the page. So awesome. it's up to date, except for the one that I did Wednesday. Wednesday. I've been on camera so much this week, I don't even know what day it is anymore. <laughs> um, and also the Women in Business podcast every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And of all these women here, Kelly, I still have to get you on the podcast at some point. Oh. <laughs> you, uh, Tanya and Allie and Pilar awesome. have all been in the hot seat with me. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> oh, awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for your time and all the great insight today. And uh, we'll look forward to talking to you all again soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Right, bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. All right, Terry, All right. that was awesome. fantastic. Um, and then uh, Jay, uh, Tanya's husband, had a, a comment for you. It says, Terry, congrats on making it to another birthday milestone. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, Terry, that was uh, pretty darn amazing. What, uh, any anything that you want to share or took out of that, or, or should we just uh, go know, and wrap this up? I, I think I think more than anything, just uh, just the whole concept of of encouraging one another, and and uh, I think we can all take away from that, and and uh, you know, it's been a it's been a tough year for for everyone, and uh, I think that a lot of people pulled together and uh, and uh, helped each other through, and you know, let's just look forward to a a prosperous twenty twenty one, and. And, uh, and and you and I need to do some planning for that. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. Yeah, I, I I agree with you, Terry. I think you know the comments and the stuff that uh, kind of came out of all that really was uh, encouraging, and and right. the collaboration and and the encouraging and. Um, I think it was Tanya who had said at one point that sometimes her positivity is is annoying to some people. I I, <laughs> I mentioned the other day. I. I posted something in, in one of our, uh, our success group, uh, posts about the fact that, you know what, the more I've learned and the more I've grown, the more I want to surround myself with people that are annoyingly positive. All right. Because, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what... it, it, you know, it, it's just one of those things that, uh, it's not that they're annoyingly positive to be annoying. It's that they, they've, for me, I've seen the alternative and I, I, I prefer annoyingly positive. So, um, <laughs> indeed. So, and that's what we got from uh, this wonderful group of folks. Um, so speaking of this wonderful group of folks, Terry, uh, as we mentioned at the top of the show, the Reggie's, uh, will be coming to a conclusion for 2020 here at the end of next week. Uh, so next Friday's show, we'll have, uh, the announcement of the winners. Uh, but, if you want to register, or I'm sorry, register, if you want to vote uh, for any of these wonderful women, in fact, uh, I think the one thing that uh, maybe got missed in the fact that Christine was uh, the guest host is she is also one of those Reggie nominees for that category. So we had all five of the people that are nominated for that category with us today. And that, that was really incredible. Um, so the link to go do that again is two regular guys.com forward slash 2020 underscore Reggie's. And uh, you can uh, go over there and vote and uh, vote early and often. Right. Isn't that what they say? <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, just, and we, what we've announced in the past is that you and I each have one vote. So right. this yeah. is definitely uh, an industry uh, uh, driven uh, award. Yep, definitely. So, uh, yep, we each have one vote, you know, and, and so I guess voting early and often doesn't really work when you've got one vote, but hey, it's <laughs> we don't use any voting machines here. Yeah, so. no voting machines, <laughs> not hanging chads. No, no hanging chads. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure why we can't. Anyhow. Um, <laughs> all right, Terry. Well, um, what do you got coming up here? Anything uh, you've got coming up at all that uh, you can share with us? Uh, not, not exactly, uh, working on some projects for 2021, because, you know, as, as you know, education is, is going to be, uh, a little different for 2021. So working on some projects with uh, a few different people 
and uh, I'm also going to be one of the speakers at the in, in uh, late January for the Impressions Expo online event. So I'm putting that together, and uh, uh, I'm actually working on that over the weekend because it is due at the end of the month, and all it's all going to be uh, packaged and recorded. And as I mentioned, Aaron, it's uh, it's going to be in in uh, in 10 to 15 minute snippets. So that's going to be kind of cool. It's a, I think it's a really interesting idea. Yeah. How about yeah. yeah, definitely. I, I've, I've uh, got to start looking at that as well. I've got a, a presentation to do. So uh, it's a good reminder. It, <laughs> I should probably get to work on that. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> so uh, now uh, one other quick thing, I, I looked at my calendar and I've got a note coming up here that I need to buy a book. Is that still... It's still in the works, man. I'm just working hard at it. All right. All right. I'm, I've, I've got it on my calendar. So I work every day on it. So <laughs> I love it. It's love awesome. It. You're going to love it. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's like I said, it, it shows up on my calendar and I see it all the time. So I'm looking forward to <laughs> nice. it. Nice. Um, so uh, let's see here. For me, what I've got coming up uh, tomorrow is uh, Small Business Saturdays, and um, this will be the eighth week of our 10-week program where I'm sharing the success principles. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with that, that's uh, from a gentleman named Jack Canfield, uh, who you probably know from the book Chicken Soup for the Souls. Uh, he uh, has a book called The Success Principles that I am uh, becoming a certified trainer in. And so we're going through a 10-week program of his and then discussing it. And uh, last year we talked about taking, last year, last week, we talked about taking 100% responsibility for ourselves. And this week, the conversation is about stopping blaming and complaining, which uh, I come from a long line of blamers and complainers. So uh, it's, it's been a challenge for me. And, uh, the time to assign blame. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that, my, my previous modus operandi was to go directly there. <laughs> Who can I blame first? And no, So we're going to talk about that. It, uh, it's been, been great. So if you want to check that out, you can do so over at liveosg.com or at facebook.com forward slash our success group pro. And we'll get some of those links into the comments here. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and then uh, we also have the DAX live event coming up on the 11th of December. Uh, so uh, that will be happening. Um, you and I are going to actually spend some time talking to Scott as kind of a guest pop in as the two regular guys. And, and uh, I'm going to be presenting information about our success group and, and uh, so you get over to DaxShow.com, uh, no, no S on that, DaxShow.com to check that out. And then uh, one last thing here, Terry, before we call it a show here is uh, Eric has got his take up happening this afternoon and that is happening at 2.30 Mountain Time. And today the conversation is uh, the Holiday Survival Guide, Quick Gifts and Faux Knits. So he's always so... He's, he's a wordsmith, that he's guy. A, he's a wordsmith, exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> so you can catch that over at facebook.com forward slash eric.campbell, and that's E-R-I-C-H dot Campbell, or you can catch him on his YouTube channel again at Eric Campbell is where you can find him there on YouTube. And again, I'll try to post some links in the comments here in just, just one moment. So, But with all that being said... I'm not sure I've taken a breath. Terry, anything we missed here today? <laughs> I think uh, I think it's time to sign off and uh, look forward to uh, announcing all those uh, Reggie winners next Friday. Excellent. Yes, me as well. And uh, tuxedos ready. You got yours back from the cleaners yet, Terry? We'll, we'll be ready to go. <laughs> Yeah, it's the one I wore in your wedding. So I, was like, oh, I don't know if they're still billing you for it or what. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I wondered where that monthly charge is coming from. It uh, must have been paid for by now. <laughs> All right. Well, Terry, we've come to the close of another show. We want to thank Christine Shreve for being the guest host today. Wonderful job. We'd also like to thank the other Reggie nominated women in garment decorating folks who are with us Pilar, Tanya, Kelly, and Allie. Uh, just just amazing. Thank you so much. I, I feel much smarter. It's definitely not the smartest person in the room. So um, I, I definitely feel a lot, lot smarter now, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a great comment on their part as well. Don't be yeah. the smartest person in the room. Yeah. <laughs> we also want to thank our show producer, Eric Campbell. He took a rare hour off from the show, but uh, want uh, him to know that we appreciate all he does for us. Yes. You can find him at ericcampbell.com and on The Take Up. 
Yes, uh, so definitely go check him out. And like I said, uh, it, we very much appreciate all he does. And and uh, <laughs> he was so like, oh, I, I might be able to like pop in. I'm like, Eric, dude, take some time. You, you, you <laughs> deserve to pop in. in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Well, next week, Terry, as we've mentioned, we'll be announcing the winner of the 2020 Reggie Awards, eighth annual uh, People's Choice, so to speak, Industry Choice Awards. Uh, as Terry mentioned, we only have one vote. We, we just kind of put it out there and the industry takes it from there. So uh, we're really excited to, to see who comes out on top and, and to have a lot of fun with that. We're going to we're gonna effort to try, try to get as many of the winners on with us that we can. So we'll, we'll see. Um, it could be a, a juggling act, but uh, you never know how that's going to go, Terry. <laughs> hey, well, we, we are uh, we are always known for for the juggling and technical difficulty. So you know that's that's our thing. <laughs> <laughs> kind of is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Until then, I'm Terry Combs. He's Aaron Montgomery, and we are the two regular guys. Here we go. We're out. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for listening to Two Regular Guys. Check out our website at tworegularguys.com. That's the number two regularguys.com. You can also interact with us over at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash two regular guys, or send us a tweet, twitter.com slash two regular guys. And we have a YouTube page. You can find all that from our website, two regular guys.com. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to spending some time with you again next week.